Hey, Tony guys are here. I ain't gonna be before you long. Like the pastor be saying, because my son went to grab my son to eat. I haven't eaten all day today. I think it's like 5 p.m. here. Trying to get this here eating schedule on. But I, I did a video last night. I was talking about this and wanting to come on here and kind of continue the conversation. But in the in the daylight and one of the things you got to realize as you going forward day by day is just really be thinking about are you doing everything that you can do to work on you are you setting the best example possible and this this thing is so hard it is hard we can't even act like it's not hard but it's it's unfair to compare your life to other people's life you don't want to get caught up doing that because for example you might see me on my treadmill but it's easy for me to be on my treadmill when i'm shooting a video it's gonna feel totally different for you to get on a treadmill for 30 minutes to an hour if you ain't got nothing to do but walk or listen to something but while i'm sitting there talking i'm preaching i'm teaching and that video is gonna go out and make money that's a totally different reason and feeling while i'm walking so you have to think about that it's just like if somebody say hey make content for your brand <laughs> but they making money it's different if you making content and you ain't making no money so your goals gotta be your goals and you got to do what you call to do. And you got to move at your pace. And you got to make progress. And, and here's the thing now. There, there's, there's something in your heart that there's a baseline that you got to get to. Like it's a baseline. Like you could feel when you doing what you need to do for you. <clears throat> you could feel it. And, and it kind of hurt. It hurt a little bit. But it also it hurt us when somebody else get better. Like if, let's say you got a friend and y'all gossiping at lunch, at work, and your friend say, hey, you know, I don't mean no harm. I don't mean to sound preachy or judgy, but I decided I don't want to gossip anymore. You know, I just convicted my spirit to be talking about people behind their back. You know that's the right thing to do, but at first, you, if it's not you that came up with that idea, you're going to feel less than. You're going to be like, what you mean? We don't even talk about nobody like that. What you mean? Like, oh, my goodness. And it's like, then it's almost like you're losing your friend because, like, okay, what do we talk about? The weather? Talk about sports? Like, I, I'm loving talking about such and such and talking about such and such and how bad that weave look and how bad that wig look and how that heel broke. I would love talking about that. And, and you kind of, like my son, he texted me and he said, you know, I, I don't have social media. I just deleted my, I think he said TikTok and Snapchat. It's called Snapchat, but I call it Snapchat because it just don't deserve. And I seen this social media thing that I showed him today. The guy was saying that Snapchat ruined teenagers' life faster than anything else. And I remember the guy I was just talking to one of my mentees. He playing basketball over here in Europe. We're going to try to go see him this weekend. He was saying that that Snapchat, it'll get you in trouble. He said because the, the stuff delete, the pictures delete. So people be sending news and stuff and it delete. And my son just told me, said, I finally deleted my social media. I'm like, okay, where this come from? But then even though he said that, it was a little part of me that was like, oh, man, he's not going to be a kid no more. Like, oh, man, he's not going to be taking them selfies all day that they be doing. Man, it just, I'm just like, these selfies all day long. And they send them to each other. And I'm just, I just can't wrap my head around it. Like, okay, all right, you just took a selfie of yourself right here in this picture. And then now you take a selfie right here in this picture. Then now you done took two steps and now you taking another selfie. And I'm just like, what is going on? Like, what are y'all doing? And then me trying not to be no old school dad and calling them, you know, slurs. 
But you know, you want to use a slur on them like, but hey, but y'all kind of such and such. Y'all sending all these selfies to each other, y'all. You know? But <clears throat> I was thinking, I said, you know what? If that's what he need to do right now for himself, that's what he need to do. I'm I'm proud of it. And then I thought about me. I said, you know, <clears throat> I thought about myself. And I said, you know, I'm over here in Europe. I just went to connect with one mentee over in um, Mallorca, Spain. And then my other mentee, he called me today. He in Poland. I looked up the flight. There's a flight for Thursday. And that flight from here to there is 32 year olds. Now, my son will miss training Friday, or if they train Saturday, he'll miss training. But I'm like, you know what? That one, two days ain't going to do nothing that much for him in training that it will for him to see another country and to see another pro athlete and to see him playing overseas when he want to play, you know, in the NBA in America, but he happened to do this right now and to see him power through that and us to go out to eat with him and my son be able to get game from him and learn from him because the, cause the young man is sharp. Both of these young men over here in Europe that I know, they sharp. Like, they head on straight. And that'll, that'll do so much more for my son. That's like the mental side of it. Like, okay, yeah, be on the field Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. But, hey, let's see if we can get over there this weekend. And I, and I realize that made my heart come alive. That made my heart come alive. But then what I think about is like, okay, I'm doing this, but my wife, she at home with Tayden, and, you know, they went to the movies. You know, they'll go here and there. They'll do this and that. And getting out the house, living life. And I thought about it because one part of me is like, well, man, I don't want to be traveling around, like, seeing all this different stuff, and my wife ain't getting to see it. You know, that my other half. But it's kind of like saying, I'm going to be blind because my friend blind. Or I'm going to be crippled because my friend crippled. Or I'm going to be less than because, you know, it's kind of like choosing to be something other than what your baseline is. So it's like we will downplay ourselves and our grind because and I was, I was telling my son the other day i say son honestly i'm naturally athletically built like i i didn't do a thing for abs and i had an eight pack of abs my son never had an ab his whole life he didn't have an ab like a last year he didn't have abs and that came after like a summer of sacrifice where his mom was giving him workouts and he did the workouts no question asked and he lost, I think, 11 pounds. And he came back fit. And then now, you know, he probably grew a couple of inches or inches or so. And so he leaned and he got some abs. Now, his abs is still, they built, not bought. Like, mine was just genetic. I ain't do nothing for him. I just live a regular life. I ate what I wanted to eat. My genetics different. And I tell him the other day, I said, son, honestly, to be honest with you, the reason why I don't get into the shape that I can get in is because I don't want to make you and your mama feel bad because y'all genetics is different. And that's just me being transparent with you, but I want you to apply this to your life of how you could save money, but you're not saving because you don't want to feel rich when your family broke. You can work 80 hours a week, but you don't want to work eight hours a week because your friend and your family feel like that's too much because they can only do 36 a week. You could you could sacrifice on another level. You could serve on another level. You could do this, travel on another level. You can do whatever on another level, but you downplaying it because you don't want to make somebody else uncomfortable. And I realize, you know, the Lord is telling me like, listen, like this on you too. The Lord telling me like this on you too. And I want to share this message from the Lord with you. Like the Lord saying like, listen, you playing small 
you downplaying could be hindering, that could be hindering your son because he don't see a bodily discipline from you. You not eating right and not doing right. That could be hindering your wife. That could be hindering your whole household. Whereas if you get your head on straight and you eating right, now you the head. And when I say that, I mean, if you a single mom, if you a single dad, if you got influence in your family, you the big sister, big brother, you the little sister, little, little brother, you the cousin, you the auntie, you the uncle, like you the Christian, you got influence. So you got to use that. You got to use that and you got to do what is your baseline. You got to operate on your level of excellence, your level of greatness. <clears throat> Y'all yeah, make it in here, man. Appreciate it. So, you got you something now? Yeah, I did. I'm just going to okay. eat it a little bit later because I had that subway. So, all right. I mean, I was still hungry. I had that subway, but I'm not like all the way hungry yet. Yeah. So, did, did you look at their hours? How late they stay home? Okay. Yeah, this is her place. Did you uh, check their hours? It's not that late. Do you know the name of it? Babylon. Because Google that and see what it say. Just in case, because I don't know if I'm going to eat again. I, I probably just eat this, but I don't know if I'm going to eat again before I, mean, I go to sleep. I think like I go to sleep by eight, 10. Nine, yeah, eight. that's what I'm saying. Like 8 or 9, I might want me a little something. You yeah. know what, though? That chicken, actually, that grilled chicken I had from that place right there, down there, that, that thing, that, that was good. That, and it got rice. Okay. Right there, um, where I went for the ramen. Seriously? Where I went for the ramen. I don't say the name just because people can Google and try to find you. But where I went for the ramen, that... They had a, on a kebab, the chicken on the kebab. Mm -hmm. It was good. And it got like a little kind of curry tint to it, but it's like grilled with a little yeah, today, curry oh seasoning. God, he misinterpreted me, so he added one extra thing. So on he, this? Yeah, he added this like red sauce. It's like a, it's just like a chili sauce. But uh, I mean, I don't think it'll be critical. I think it'll okay. have more flavor. No, it'll be good. But see, see how it tastes. Yeah, yeah, hey. I got, got it on mine too, so. Yeah, I'm a military man. Eat whatever. Well, yeah, um, I might get some chicken and rice uh, from from that there a little later, but I think they close about nine thirty, so I'm gonna check and see how you hit that for me. Hey, so y'all forgive me. You know, um, I gotta talk to my son. That's another thing too. You gotta know your baseline. For me, family come first, and I and I just know it, it's been days, it's been times. Oh, I'm working. You know, I, I, and I know that's a thing as adults, as people, but it's like, you know what? You don't care for me. You watch me, but you don't care for me. Like, that right there care for me. Like, he care for me. So what would I be to kick him to the curb, to not talk to him, to talk to somebody else? You see what I'm saying? You got to know your baseline. You got to know your baseline. Now, my wife called me. I missed a call earlier called mentor, but now she called him on WhatsApp video. God bless y'all. We'll talk soon.